beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. An area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. On the other side of the South Pole from middle America. From middle America. From middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. leaked maps and documents allegedly obtained by the KGB and if accurate the Russians believe that a high-tech German faction did not surrender and not only escaped to Antarctica but were responsible for many of the flying saucer sightings of the late 40s and early 1950s. A lot of strange news of recent regarding Antarctica. Strange sightings, strange trips to this unknown land. This frozen tundra, we have John Kerry visiting it. We have the Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Church Bishop visiting it after having a meeting with Pope Francis, the first time in over a thousand years that uh, the leader of the Catholic Church and the Russian Orthodox Church actually met. So they both met in Cuba. Russian Orthodox uh, Archbishop went and visited Antarctica. Also during this trip, when John Kerry was gonna go on November 13th, there was an, a famous uh, mountain climber who had conquered Mount Everest, uh, Sir Ranulf Fiennes, who wanted to go as well on November 13th to Antarctica, but he was denied. And this was the exact time in which John Kerry went. Why was he denied is the question. Why is it uh, even Barack Obama recently went to Antarctica? And of course, we also have these strange sightings of recent. And we have these strange sightings of recent within Antarctica. As you can see, three pyramids right here, sort of like the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Very strange. You even have these smaller pyramids next to the larger all found in Antarctica. This is a recent find. This is located not too far from England's official Antarctic base. Of course, then there's also some conspiracy with regards to these pyramids that perhaps this is where maybe some of these dignitaries have been coming and visiting of recent, knowing that this was recently found. Of course, we know the past of uh, Nazi Germany visiting the Antarctic, bringing in many ships, building some sort of secret base in Antarctica. And of course, we also have Operation High Jump with Admiral Byrd coming in, and we don't know exactly know what occurred there, but shortly after, we have this Antarctic Treaty for which no one now can easily go to Antarctica, that it's banned that anybody can go there unless they have some sort of scientific reason to be there and they get approved. It's just kind of strange, right? You have all these strange things that all connect together. With the proliferation of new technology, such as Google Earth, where you can tap into various satellite imagery uh, via the internet, you have a lot of people doing research, trying to find various strange phenomena in Antarctica and, of course, other places. Here you have this massive uh, cavern. It appears to be just a cavern at first glance, but if you if you look at some of the other angles of the footage, you can clearly see that uh, this is this is man-made, and this appears to be some sort of entrance to an underground base. I mean, really, this is not natural. There's no way you can look at this as being a natural formation. Uh, 
so this is one of many finds of recent with Antarctica, various underground base entrances. Here's another oddity you're here. There appears it could be some sort of entrance as well. Uh, it was broadcast in Russia, May 2006. And of course, there's other imagery such as this one here, which appears to be potentially like four tanks and something crashing into the tundra. We don't exactly know what it is. Of course, it's an aerial photo. It, it's difficult to make it out at such a distance, but it would be very interesting if we could somehow get a closer look. And of course, recently WikiLeaks even had some revealed Antarctica pictures, 24 pictures. And you have to ask yourself, why would Julian Assange be releasing pictures of Antarctica? And of course, you have also all this controversy with these dignitaries. Recent uh, visiting Antarctica right after the release of this, this new find of these, these pyramid structures in Antarctica, which I showed you earlier, that appear to be like in the almost the same formation as the pyramids in Giza. It's very strange. And we're talking Antarctica here. Okay, we're talking Antarctica. Extremely cold. There's no way that any human in a standard working condition could do that. And of course, if you check into some of the, the mere costs of, of living in Antarctica, it's just insane. Okay, we're talking a gallon of gas in Antarctica costs thirty dollars. Okay, uh, and you know there's some people I've read about their their living in Antarctica and the costs associated with various things. Basically, everything costs ten times as much there. So you could imagine just how much manpower it would take to build these pyramids. It's just insane, just to think about. And of course, there's this this secret history of its past, to where if you look at some of these older ancient maps. It shows Antarctica is actually being uh, far less covered with ice. So obviously this ice of re is more of a recent thing over the last so many thousand years. Uh, perhaps in the, in the ancient past, Antarctica wasn't covered by ice. And so it's really interesting to, to look into all this. And there's even some references in the book. I think it's the book of Enoch. I can't remember which part. Uh, where it talks about him going to the uttermost parts of the earth and it being a frozen tundra. And this is where he had entered into another dimension. Uh, it, I, I can't remember the passage offhand. I remember reading it. And I thought it was very strange sounding. And it sort of correlates with some of, of what people have been saying about Antarctica being a gateway to potentially another dimension. In certain places, and of course, we saw Admiral Byrd talk about uh, the, the the section of Antarctica below Central America as being completely uninhabited, uh, never been sent, seen by man. He was talking about past the pole. What's past the pole? Of course, if we assume heliocentrism, you're talking about well, it's the other side of the Earth, right? What if it's not that? Okay, that well, that's the question. What if it's not that? And are, are they hiding something? Okay, we're going to get into that next. Okay, 1773, on uh, 30 January 1774, James Cook uh, reaches 71 degrees 10 uh, minutes south, farther south, coming within 75 miles of the Antarctic mainland without seeing it. Okay, um, later reports said that uh, during three voyages lasting three years and eight days, Captain Cook and, and crew sailed a total of 60,000 miles along the Antarctic coastline, never once finding an inlet or path through or beyond the massive glacial wall. So th the other question is, well, how come ships don't go off the sea if it's flat? How come ships don't fall off the edge? Well, here's why you don't fall off the edge. <laughs> it's a 200 to 300 foot high wall <laughs> that is the coastline of Antarctica. It, it, it's the border that scripture says is keeping everything in. N nothing's going past that. Um, but yet the Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference, allegedly. It took him 60,000 miles to circumnavigate Antarctica. This guy Shackleton goes down there on the, um, and I think I put this in my original blog. He goes down there on the, on the, the name of the ship is the Nimrod. He goes oh, down wow. there on the Nimrod, and it's called the Nimrod Expedition. I'm like, seriously? Okay, Nimrod's goal was to reach into heaven, right? Um, 
Yeah, the Nimrod Expedition. So you can click on the link I got there and read all about the Nimrod Expedition, British Antarctic Expedition, otherwise known as Nimrod Expedition. And it was on the, the name of the ship was the Nimrod right here. <laughs> okay. Nimrod was trying to reach into heaven by going up. Could it be that these guys are trying to go out, <laughs> try to find the, the, the ground floor? I don't know, but I mean, why do you? And this is what really got me is they did so in 1908. 1908. I'm like, really? 1908? Seriously? 1908 is when Nimrod was born. Uh, according to my other, let me see what, um, what I put in here. Uh, this is one of my other blogs. Yeah. Okay. The 350 post flood years of Noah's life. This is a chart I did last year and the follow up chart, the Nimrod Abraham timeline. Nimrod was born in 1908 AM or years since creation. And then 1908, see, 1900, 1907 to 1909, well, that's 1908, <laughs> Nimrod went to Antarctica. I'm like, I mean, you can't write this stuff. I mean, wow. Okay, so they go down there. A whole bunch of people are, you know, from that point on, once they start finding ways to get through the ice to get there, more and more expeditions and, and better ships are, are built and, and used to get there. Then you get to Admiral Byrd. Now, when Admiral Byrd goes down there several times, and one of the operations is called Operation High Jump. And you're like, oh, oh geez. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump. Really? Operation High Jump. <laughs> I mean, you know, because they went out there with aircraft carriers and airplanes and stuff. You know, some, some real heavy equipment and stuff like that. Operation High Jump. So then he gets on tv national tv and he does this radio show where he talks about all of the um natural resources down there i mean coal and uranium and stuff that fuel the world forever it's wonderful and you can go on youtube and look up the admiral bird um news interview i think it was on cbs and it's so it's wonderful and all these nations are going down there you know russia and japan all these nations are going down there check it out well then he goes down after that interview they go down on the next mission which i believe was called operation deep freeze and then all of a sudden everything changes everybody pulls out they leave antarctica and all the nations that were down there doing whatever they were doing signed a treaty the antarctic treaty and i believe it was 1958 or somewhere thereabouts saying nope um Nobody can stake a claim to Antarctica, and if you're going to go down there, you can only go down there for scientific reasons under carefully restricted guidance, um, but it's not a free-for-all. Nobody can just, you know, hey, I'm going to go check out Antarctica and do a high jump on my own. No, can't do it. So wow. Wow. when I look at the nations that signed the Antarctic Treaty, and I look at the nations that are putting forward, quote-unquote, space videos of the Earth, eh, they're the same people. So from if, if I was to put on my tinfoil hat and play the conspiratorial uh, role here, there definitely appears to be some very suspicious things that took place. And then all of a sudden NASA is formed. And then uh, simultaneously, you have Russia and the United States doing high altitude nuclear bomb testing. They're, they're blowing up nuclear, nuclear bombs high up in the atmosphere, and they called it Operation Fishbowl. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, man. I mean, they're calling it Operation Fishbowl. Okay? So, I mean, if they're trying to keep us from having cons conspiracy mindsets, they're they're really not helping out much with the names there. You know, the Nimrod mission goes down there, Operation High Jump, and oh, yeah, we, we're going to all leave there because apparently we found something. And now we're going to start blowing things up high up in the atmosphere. And if you go on YouTube and do a search for Operation Fishbowl high altitude nuclear testing and watch the explosions that took place and how, how they look, I got to tell you, man, it looks like they hit a dome and they, like they were, it's, it's almost as if they found the end of the Truman Show in Antarctica. And then they said, I wonder how high this thing is and started blowing off bombs. And then you're going to tell me that we went from Sputnik in 1958 to men standing on the moon uh, in 1969, you're telling me in 11 years, we went from ideas scribbled on napkins to putting men on the moon with technology less sophisticated than my iPhone. <laughs> this might be sort of difficult to see what's going on here, but what I'm trying to show here is sort of what's going on with the circumference that Captain James Cook came up with and the circumference of the Earth, okay? 
The circumference of the Earth is about 25,000 miles, which is what we have here. This is represented as being 25,000 miles. The radius um, times 2 times pi equals the circumference. So we're talking about a proportion of the radius. So 25,000 miles circumference here. This one represents a 60,000 miles circumference. And this is based off just proportions. Okay, we're talking a radius of 9,549 miles. Clearly a lot more than 3,956, right? So at any rate, my point is, is that um, we're talking, uh, you know, more than double the size. So here's the, uh, the picture of the Earth from, uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. You know what? We adopted this whole model like four or five hundred years before the airplane. Four hundred years before the airplane, pretty much. It was like, what, like beginning of the 1900s? They went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper until, it's funny, back in the 60s when, when they went to the moon, this is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. You see this here? What we're looking at right now appears to be the Earth and the moon revolving around it. Now, I have to ask you a question. Do you think that this is just some fake virtual reality imagery? Or do you think this is real photos that are just set in uh, stills put in succession? Let's just look at it again here. Do you think that this is something someone made in virtual reality? Or do you think these are real photos that are just put in succession? Okay, well, I showed my wife this, and she thought it was completely fake. And that was before I told her that this is NASA's latest photo. This is literally NASA's latest photos. They somehow, after 40 years of not taking any photos of the Earth from space with their, what was it, 10 to 13,000 satellites out there, they finally decided to say, to take a photo of Earth. 40 years after the fact, after all the Apollo missions, they finally said, wow, we finally were able to clear out of space and we could just take a photo. Finally. 40 years after the fact, you know, because it's so hard to take a photo when you got 13,000 satellites out in space. And this is what they gave us. Now, is it just me, or do they think we're stupid? Because that is the fakest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, seriously, give me a break. I think I could do a better job myself. I am not joking. I actually think I could. I actually have a, a background in ray tracing and... I also have a background in 3D design with uh, CAE, Computer Aided Engineering, with ideas and Unigraphics and Pro-E, all these uh, highly expensive and complex programs for modeling. And that's really a pathetic photo, fake photo. It really looks fake to me. Doesn't it look fake to you? This is not news. This is not an anniversary. Well, actually it is. We found a, a very unique reel of footage that we have queued up to show you. Yeah. And it's from the mission. And to our knowledge, no one has ever seen it before. Mm -hmm. And it's 30 years old. And, and you want me to see this while you have me on camera? Well, and to, and to tell us what it is. <laughs> I mean, it, it's... Uh, well, I don't know why I should do that. It's a, it, well, it's a very it, unique I, Well, footage. it may be that I need to see it, and then we sit down and we talk about it. I think when you see the footage, you'll, you'll see that it's well, very extraordinary, one okay. of a kind, okay. behind the scenes yeah. type of footage. Yeah. Well, if it is, why do you have access to something that no one else has seen before? Serendipity, I guess. And uh, it was recorded 
on the 18th of what? Of July, 1969. Do you remember this? On the 18th? Now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. What, what is your uh, proposition? That we didn't go to the moon? I know for a fact that you did. Huh? I know for a fact that you did not. You know for a fact that we did not. That's correct. And you'll see this tape proves that. Okay, well, I, I'm not interested in, in satisfying your suppositions when there's all this evidence that we did. This proves, as you see, that you're using 